Welcome to another bonus episode here at Hockey Inside Out with the Habs banged up by the injury bug. And with 31 games left in the regular season, gents, what do you want to see from this franchise moving forward? Keep in mind, after the All-Star break, eight of the next 12 are going to be away from the Bell Center, including that four-game road trip in California. Yeah, I think it's the most important thing for this team. Obviously, you want them to get the best draft picks possible going forward. The organization wants to tank, right? Not the way that the Chicago Blackhawks have because they want to stay competitive. You want to see games like we've been seeing. Uh, The last game against the Senators where the Canadians started off, I thought, playing terrible, but clawed their way back over the course of the game, made it a close game, and lost. Those are the kinds of games that you want to see. The game against Detroit recently where they pushed the game into overtime and loss, obviously you want to probably avoid the extra point, but it's always good to get something for the guys in the room as well. Game, the game against the Boston Bruins, they were totally outclassed in terms of talent against the Boston Bruins, but they fought so hard in that game that they made it close. Those are what you want to see. A few wins peppered in there just to have a little bit of fun for the guys in the room, but just competitive losses is essentially what you want. And I think the last several weeks, considering how injured the team is, it's wild that they've actually won as many games as they have. They have no business beating teams like the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Winnipeg Jets, the New York Rangers, and they've managed to do it. Yeah, compete level is the main thing going on the rest of the season. That game against Otto was a perfect game for the Canadians. You said they started off slow. They came back. They battled right to the end. They lost 5-4. It was an entertaining game for the fans. The compete level was there, and they lost. So that helps them uh, in the drafts, the draft lottery. But – Compete level is the main thing. And, you know, as Marty St. Louis said after Cole Caulfield was uh, injured and out for the season, uh, they need to replace his enthusiasm level as much as anything else. And I think Raphael harvey Penard and Alex Bilzil coming up from Laval have done that. Having these guys in the room, uh, they're not just going to go through the motions. They're not going to tank. This is their chance to prove that they belong in the NHL. And I think that's given a spark within the room. And also the meeting that St. Louis had with the players before the start of the second half of the season. And, Said, you know, I let you guys just play loose in the first half of the season and do your thing. But now we're playing for the crest on the front of your sweater and we're playing for the city. And they've tightened up defensively a lot since then. Uh, The compete level has been much better. And I think just bringing in these guys from Laval has given a boost. That fourth line with, uh, you know, Pizzetta and uh, Harvey Pennard and Belzil has given their, they've been their, arguably their best line for the last few games. They just, they work their butts off every time they're on the ice and the, the players feed off of that. So compete level. Um, I don't think Marty St. Louis is going to let that slide. He's going to keep on these guys. Uh, so moving forward, as a Canadiens fan, you want to see them compete as hard as they can. You want to see them lose games so that they're going to have a better chance of uh, getting Connor Bedard in the draft. But the compete level is the, the thing. I mean, I go back. I've mentioned this before. You know, before Dominic Ducharme got fired, sort of the nail in his coffin was when Josh Anderson said, "It's no fun coming to the rink anymore." They've got to Marty's got to keep it fun for these guys to come to the rink. Keep them competing, understanding they're not going to, you know, losses help them better than wins, but they're going to try to win. But they're not going to have the talent to win a lot of games. But as long as they compete hard, uh, I think fans will be happy with that. And I think team management will be happy with that also. And and personally, uh, you know, I would like to see them uh, continue to improve on their, you know, defensive game. Uh, 189 goals against uh, fifth worst in the league. I think this is an area of concern, and they're still playing a run-and-gun type of game where they're giving odd man rushes. They're giving uh, situations where uh, you got a lot of guys that are wide open in front of the net uh, that shouldn't happen. And uh, there's, there's a number of, of breakdowns uh, over the course of the game that is a high-risk type of uh, hockey game. And I think in order for them to track in the right direction, I think that they have to try and shore up some some discipline in, in the defensive zone play. And I look at, you know, a number of goals that are being uh, scored with the opposition getting position on the defense inside of them instead of the old expression, boxing them out in advance. And, you know, when they know that the puck is going back to the point, there's shots that are going to be coming. Defense don't wait necessarily for the shot to come. Try and get body position within the rules uh, to keep those guys to the outside. But, uh, there's a number of uh, little areas that I think that with the type of game that they're playing right now, which is a little bit of a, a high risk for whatever reason, they're, the guys are thinking offense all the time, but they do have to shore up uh, some of their defensive zone play 
a little more discipline and start to cut down on some point blank, real good scoring opportunities by plugging those areas and not getting into, uh, you know, uh, running uh, left sides on the right side, rights on the left side. And I'm not totally sure that I understand what they're doing defensively, whether they're playing a man on man, they seem to, I mean, I, I see a lot of times the defense are out at the blue line uh, following, I guess, is their guy. Uh, ultimately, then you rely on your forward to play back in front of your net, which we all know you don't trust the forward. So, <laughs> uh, the, uh, these, these areas are a concern for me. I see it over and over. And uh, the, the, the record speaks, speaks for itself when you see not only the goals against, but you also see the prime time scoring chances they're giving up just through a lack of uh, discipline and execution in the defensive zone. It would also be nice to see them get some kind of production out of the power play. I mean, they did get two goals against uh, Ottawa on the power play. Um, it's been a problem for so long. It'll also be interesting the rest of the season watching Nick Suzuki, who's now taking Cole Caulfield's spot, that shooting spot at the top of the circle on the power play. And if he can uh, he can get some offense, he's one goal in his last 20 games, maybe he can start scoring a little bit more on the power play there. Uh, but the power play, I think, during the offseason even, is something the Canadians really need to take a look at, whether it's bringing in a, a new coach who can be a power play specialist, because it's just this has been a problem for too long and they've got to get it fixed. Yeah, there's things to work on for sure. Uh, I think the goals have dropped a little bit against at one point in the season, the Canadians were on pace for allowing like 30 or more goals than last year, which was already the franchise record for goals allowed. So they're now down to on pace to allow 304 goals this season, which is about 15 less than last season. And uh, the scoring is also down by about 10 goals over 82 games. So maybe playing a little bit more high event hockey could bring some more goals out, but if there's any indication for the power play, I think we're going to see a lot more Mike Hoffman goals over the end stretch here. Took a while to get one against his former team, the Ottawa senators over two games, but man, he had like six or seven wow. absolute ripper shots that uh, Forsberg just kept finding a way to stop until he finally got one. He almost killed Forsberg and one of them too, to one right by his head. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, you look at it this way, guys. I mean, you mentioned the goals given up, Rick, Andrew and Stu. I mean, think about the small sample of late. Uh, now, I think now it's six out of the last seven. They've given up four goals or more. Thank God the All-Star break is here because perhaps Martin St. Louis can come up with a different concept. As Stu mentioned before, it's not about systems. It's about concepts. So perhaps he might come up with a different concept moving forward for this franchise going towards the spring months. That'll do it for this bonus episode here of Hockey Inside Out. Don't forget to send us your questions and comments. We look forward to conversing about that. On a future episode, and check out on the YouTube page for Hockey Inside Out for all the latest content on this show. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter at MontrealGazette.com slash newsletters. And for full bonus for bonus episodes and full episodes, bonus content, you name it, we have it. Check out Hockey Inside Out for all of that plus more. On behalf of Rick, Stu, and Andrew, wish you a great week. Stay warm. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Yeah.